Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. With the new year upon us, everyone wants to learn new skills. And so I thought it might be an interesting idea this time around to take a step back and look at a bigger picture topic, which is how to learn financial modeling, because we do get a lot of questions about how to approach it and what to do if you really want to master this process. Now, you might think that I'm going to jump into Excel here, but I'm actually going to take a bit of a swerve and start by talking about video games. So I'm showing you some footage right now of Cyberpunk 2077, a game which I really enjoyed. I am going to bring up my Steam account right now and show you that I played this game for about 141 hours. I got every single trophy in it. And before you judge me, this took months to do at my current play rate of about one hour per day. And I bring this up because when it comes to this topic of learning skills like financial modeling, a lot of people would look at this and say that I should pick a company that I'm interested in. I should go and download its information and then start opening Excel. And so they would suggest looking at the company that makes Cyberpunk, CD Projekt Red, and going to Capital IQ or going to their investor relations section and then downloading all their information and trying to set up my own model for the company. And that would be the best way to learn since I'm personally interested in the topic. The problem is that this is actually a bad way to learn the fundamentals because you generally want simple, boring companies to learn the main skills here. If you take a look at CD Projekt Red and their revenue, we have years where it goes up by 730% because they released a new game, The Witcher 3 in 2015, and then it drops by 20 or 26%, and then it starts going up and it goes up by 300% when they release another new game. And so the point of this is that this company is very difficult to model because of the progression of its revenue right here. And this is why it would be a bad example to learn from and something that you would not want to do if you're just learning the skill from the first time. Good examples to learn from would be retail companies like Walmart or Target or Otis, not a retail company, but a more of an industrials company from our three statement modeling tutorial. Also, before you open up anything in Excel, you always want to start by watching someone else build several models, then practicing with templates, and then move on to open-ended models of your own choosing after that. So I would summarize the process like this. You want to start by watching someone else build at least three to four examples of models, focus on three statement models and DCFs, and then just imitate it yourself and follow along. If you need to, you can also go back and re review some accounting so you understand the links on the three statements. Now, once you've done that, then I would recommend practicing a few examples, maybe two to three models that are based on partial templates and structured case studies. And what I mean by this is that with a partial template, they give you the historical information and they set up the model for you, but they don't give you any of the projections. So it's your job to make the projections and forecasts, but you do have all the data. This is a good next step because it forces you to use your brain and think about what might be reasonable in a financial model. Once you've done that, then you can move on to practice models without a template. And for a good example of this, we covered a three statement modeling case study in this channel based on this company, Otis, an elevator manufacturer. And you could take something like this and maybe take a company that you like or that you're interested in that's also fairly simple and try to create this type of model for that company. Once you've done a few examples of that, then you can move into more complex industries and companies. And this gets really into more on the job prep this gets into messier financial statements that you have to simplify and consolidate and more technical industries. But we'll get to that later in this tutorial. Now, some people challenge all this and they say that you don't really need to learn financial modeling for entry level investment banking interviews. And they're correct in a sense, because you're not going to have to complete some type of financial model like this in most cases for these interviews, assuming you're a university or master's student, for example. But the real reason to learn financial modeling is not because of the process itself, but because it's really the best way to learn the technical concepts from accounting to valuation and to prepare for technical interview questions. Yes, you can sit there all day and memorize lists of questions and answers, but ultimately you learn and absorb the material much better if you actually go through the process yourself a few times. So that would be my quick summary. If you want the written version of this article, the links and some example files, you can go in this URL on screen. I'll pin it below the video as always. But if you just search for BIWS, how to learn financial modeling, you should be able to find it like that. In this tutorial, I will go through each of those points in more detail now. So we'll talk about watching and imitating models. Then we'll talk about practicing with partial templates, practicing without templates, learning more complex companies and industries. And then we'll discuss what you actually need to know for interviews in a bit more detail and address this very common criticism of financial modeling training. Let's go to part one, watching and imitating the modeling process. So there are many ways you can do this. 
Our courses have dozens of examples. There are books out there. And honestly, you can learn a lot just from this channel. We have several examples of full walkthroughs of three statement models, LBO models, DCF and valuation models. So you can learn quite a bit just from the free videos here. I think the most important thing though is to understand the purpose of the model and the logic of each step. If you pull up something like the Otis model, for example, you can go through and memorize the specific links and the specific assumptions that drive line items like accounts receivable and all that is fine. But what you really wanna focus on is what does the model actually tell you? And one of the points of this model was to figure out what the company's financing structure would look like, how much they can issue in dividends, how much they might be able to spend on acquisitions, what their future growth prof profile looks like. And so you want to focus on those big high level takeaways from a model like this, rather than obsessing over whether operating lease assets should be a percent of OPEX or revenue or total expenses. All that is fairly small in comparison to the main point of the model and the main takeaways from it. In this step, I would recommend focusing on revenue, expenses, and cash flow projections. So stick to three statement models or very simple DCF models. We have a good example of Walmart if you want a simple DCF. Don't even bother with merger models or LBO models or anything like that yet. Just focus on the revenue, expense, and cash flow projections here. I would recommend going through at least three or four examples until you feel comfortable with the overall process. And if there's some accounting detail that you don't quite understand or you need to review, you can go and review that. We have courses and lessons and guides, but there are plenty of other sites out there. I like accountingcoach.com. It tends to be a really good source of information that explains many of these line items in a simple way. Let's talk about step two, practicing with partial templates. So again, a partial template is something like this, where they give you some of the historical information for a company like Monster, but not everything. They give you kind of a sketch or an outline of the statements, but then it's your job to fill it in and your job to make the assumptions. I have this other example here for this company, Stadler Rail in Switzerland. One of the most important points here is that you want to focus on unit level forecasts and also on case studies that have minimal instructions. What I mean by this is that if you see a case study like this one, where they're giving you the growth rates in each year or the load factors or the passenger yields. This is a little bit too prescriptive. It's going to be more difficult to learn from something like this. You want something that is more open-ended, like the Otis case study that we covered here before, where they don't really tell you what to do. They just say to do something more than a simple percentage growth rate to project revenue. And they tell you to look at the company's guidance versus it and its investor presentations, but they don't really give you specific numbers. And that's the whole point of the modeling process. You want to learn how to make reasonable forecasts on your own. Revenue should be based on units sold times average selling price, or maybe something like number of locations times sales per location. And different types of line items should trend differently. Maybe some should trend with the number of locations, but then others should trend with the total revenue the company generates. You still wanna find companies that have relatively simple statements. I would say maybe five items on each side of the balance sheet, maybe a max of 10 items on each side of the balance sheet. You want to focus on making reasonable forecasts, not on dealing with overly complicated financial statements. And as I said, I would try to do at least two to three examples like this with these partial templates. Now let's talk about part three, practicing without templates. So here's where you can go into Witcher or cyberpunk mode and pick a company you like. Now, to be clear, I still would not recommend picking a company like CD Projekt Red because it's just too complicated and too, there's too much guesswork required to model a company like this. But you can pick something that you are a little bit more interested in once you get to this level. I would focus on the consumer retail industry, industrials, business services, and some tech and healthcare companies can also be good. Maybe a simple software company or a nursing facility company, for example, anything with clear drivers. You wanna find companies with simple financial statements, and you also want pure play businesses with clear drivers and one main business segment, which is one of the main reasons why we like retailers so much for this type of exercise. Also, it really helps if the company has good investor presentations with some data on the market, unit sales, utilization rates, pricing, and anything else like that. So to show you a specific example here, let's say that you have Walmart as one potential company you might wanna model, and then Warner Brothers in the media industry. Just looking at the income statement, I can tell you that Walmart is going to be much better because their revenue is much simpler. It's pretty much just sales from their stores with a tiny bit of membership income. Warner Brothers has at least four different business segments and at least three major segments, which means that now you're gonna have three times as many projections for revenue. 
And if you go down and look at the rest of their statements, the income statement isn't too bad, but if you go down a little bit more, there are more items in the balance sheet. And then if you scroll down again and look at the cash flow statement, there is definitely a lot more going on here. There are quite a few more line items than Walmart. So I would not recommend picking a company like this simply because it is more complicated. There's more going on and this would be better saved once you're a little bit more advanced in this process. Now to check your work once you've done something like this, I would recommend looking on a site like Yahoo Finance. So I've brought up Walmart's projections as of right now, for example, and they give earnings estimates and they also give revenue estimates. And you can check some of your forecasts against the average low and high estimates right here. And this might be a good way to see if you're moving in the right direction over the next few years. I would recommend finishing at least two of these open-ended case study examples and ideally pick companies in different industries. Now, once you get to level four or part four here, you can learn about more complex companies and industries. You can learn more about simplifying messy statements and also learning about industry-specific accounting drivers and valuation. Now, we actually have a whole older tutorial on how to simplify and consolidate the statements, so I'll refer you to that. But in general, you don't want to change too much on the income statement in most cases, but you could group together a few different revenue and expense lines if the company has too many right now. With the balance sheet, we always recommend aiming for about five items on each side, maybe 10 at the most. Consolidate short-term and long-term versions of items. Create a single net deferred tax line and just list common shareholders equity as one line. The cash flow statement is a little bit more complicated. You're going to have to simplify more aggressively to match the shorter balance sheet. You want to start with net income, add back DNA, have a deferred tax line, maybe one or two others, and then get to the change in working capital. Again, I think the Otis example here is a really good one to follow because we did something very much like this when entering and simplifying their cash flow statement. We start with net income, have a few additional lines, and then we have the change in working capital right below that. After that, you can have CapEx and maybe one or two other lines within cash flow from investing. Cash flow from financing should have maybe three or four lines, stock issuances and repurchases, the change in debt, dividends, and then not too much else besides that. So you can see what we did here, the change in debt, dividends, stock repurchases. We do have one extra line for dividends to non-controlling interest, but that's pretty minor next to everything else here. This topic of different industries is a huge one and we can't really get into it here, but they could be very complex like financial institutions or just slightly different like power and utilities. And it really depends on the group that you're gonna be joining. We have a lot of coverage group or industry group articles on mergers and inquisitions. So I do recommend reading those to get started in this part of the process. Now I wanna wrap up by talking about what you actually need to know about financial modeling for interviews. A lot of people criticize our training and financial modeling courses in general because they say that you're never going to get these modeling tests in entry level interviews. If you're more advanced or you're going for private equity or hedge fund roles, sure, you'll get these tests, but you don't need to know them for investment banking internships, for example. And it is true that in entry level interviews, at least in the US, you're not really gonna have to build models for the most part. They might give you more technical questions or more of a mini case study or something like that, but they're not going to ask you to take 90 minutes out and build a financial model. However, learning financial modeling, in my opinion, is really the best way to learn the technical topics. You can memorize all the questions you want, but there's no substitute for actually taking some time to enter your own forecasts, link the statements and learn how to calculate a company's cash flows. If you do it that way, you won't have to think that much when answering the, these questions in interviews because you'll just know the answer from your own personal experience. Now, with all that said, I don't think you need to go super complex to prepare for interviews. Definitely know accounting quite well and how the statements link together. Just go through a few simple three statement models like the examples here that start from partial templates. Valuation and DCF analysis is quite important. And with merger models and LBO models, I wouldn't go too far beyond the basics, at least not for entry level internship type interviews. So that's about it. Let's do a quick recap and summary now. To learn financial modeling, I always recommend starting out by watching and imitating the modeling process. Go through a few examples like this, then start practicing with partial templates where they give you the information, but they don't give you all the numbers or the projections. They just tell you to use your judgment and make your own forecasts. Then pick a few companies of your own choosing in industries that you might be interested in that have statements that are not overly complex and try opening up a blank Excel sheet like we did in the Otis tutorial on this channel and go through and build your own models like that. 
Then once you move beyond that level, you can learn about more complex companies and industries, especially ones with messier financial statements that need to be consolidated. In interviews, you don't need to be a financial modeling expert and you don't even need to be comfortable with building a model from a blank sheet, but I think it does really help to at least watch the process a little bit and be familiar with the overall process of linking the statement and projecting a company's cash flows because you will get questions about that. You will get questions about how to calculate different types of cash flow, how the statements link together, how different line items change, and the best way to learn is by going through at least a few of these financial modeling examples. That's it for this tutorial. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about this process and can get started with learning or improving your skills in the new year.